Hey everybody, this is Derek with CF Design. Wanted to run through a quick example of internal flow uh, to show you not only how to get a pressure drop in the flow behavior, but really how to use CF Design as a design tool to drive some of the design decisions you get from the results you get in CF Design. So here we have a little valve assembly, right? Flow's coming in on the left, flow's going out on the right, and then if I hide that outside piece and I hide the fluid part, we have this little poppet that goes up and down with this little casing. Okay, so typically things we want to get, we want to get overall pressure drop, but we also want to get some fluid flow kind of behavior overall. So let's take a look at some of the results. So the first thing I do is I plot pressure on the fluid. Okay, so if I want to get overall pressure drop, I can just kind of look at the scale and we're look, be, looking between what, 111 and 132. So probably in about the 118, 117 range at the, at, the, at the inlet. If not, I can simply just hover right over it. Uh, just holding control shift and down in the bottom left hand corner you'll see down here it's giving me uh, 119 uh, other ways to do it but that's a simple way other things I want to do is I want to look anywhere where there's a big gradient so around bends and anywhere where it's changing uh, area drastically so right here you know anywhere where there's this big step or a big sharp angle uh, and and this guy over here so you have these pressure um, kind of drops or, or real big gradients in, in, in large regions. It's a quick way to see where you should improve. So in this case, I, I would kind of smooth this path out. Uh, I would smooth this path out. I would try to get rid of these, these, these steps if I can inside of the CAD system. Okay, next let's, uh, let me just put this guy in wireframe real quick just so we can, can see it a little bit better. And the next thing I want to do is, is I want to investigate um, flow through the middle of the model. So typically I, my favorite is just to put a cut plane through the middle and I can either shade by, by contours. And what contours are showing me is that, you know, I, I think like a fluid. I come down here, I go around the, the bend and then up. And these are kind of giving me the, 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 the general overall path. Anywhere where there's dark blue here, here up here, down here. These are dead zones. These are just areas where there's recirculation going on. That's, that's not necessary and all it's doing is hurting the model. Uh, an easier way to probably see it is to, is to look at vectors. So let's put in, uh, let's turn um, shade it off and put vectors on. So let's just grow these guys out a little bit. And you're getting this kind of the same data but just in vector format. So you got a bunch of recirculation going on here, lots of stuff going on here, a bunch of junk up here at the top. So again, these recirculation regions are just giving you uh, just having an impact on the overall pressure drop and they're and, and they're they're having an effect on the overall performance sometimes you can deal with sometimes you can do something to, to fix it and sometimes you can't but but at least these are some some ideas of what to look for next thing this guy right here this little pop it you know most of the time when you have flow like this you want the the, the impingement or the force to be directly in the center of that pop it so that it moves uh, up otherwise if you have too much flow going to the right or too much flow going to the left this thing will will tend to to bend back and forth Okay, so an, an easier way to see it is if I go in here and I set the, the um, pressure values directly to that part. Okay, so now you're starting to get a better idea that, that there's probably more flow going over on the right side than the left side based upon this little red bullseye here on the left. It's a little bit more jaded to the left. You can also see that just from the vectors themselves, but let's scoot out a little bit and uh, put in a couple XY plots. So if I just grab a couple points here across this, this cutout, you know, it gives me uh, kind of an XY graph going on there. And then I do the same thing on roughly the same spot on the left hand side. You know, no nothing secretive here. Yeah, I just fat fingered it here. But so the velocities here is about 1,000. The velocities over here are up in the 1,100 to 1,200 range. So that's probably explaining why you have, uh, you know, this bias to one side or, or the other. Okay. Um, last and probably the one that I use the most is, is an ISO surface. So when you first look at it, it's kind of over, overwhelming. You think, whoa, what, what, what's going on here? But, but if you really look at it, what, what I did was I just created a velocity um, ISO surface and I wanted to be able to resize this you know, accordingly. And it's just giving me kind of a general overall view of where the flow path, the majority of the flow is going. So it's going around here, going up through the, the casing around and again, more biased on the right hand side than the left hand side. Anywhere where you don't see an ISO surface tends to be where the dead zones are. So it gives you an, an area where the flow could be altered a little bit in the CAD system, meaning that you go in and reshape the, the flow path so that it looks more like that. The more it looks like where the flow goes, the, the, the more optimal the, the pressure drop is going to be. Okay. Same thing up here in the corner. So you don't have anything up there. You know, so that anywhere where you have corners is typically where these these kind of the dead zones are in these areas that you, that you don't really need. 
So anyway, just wanted to give you a quick idea of uh, of ways that we use CF Design to 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 drive the design, not just simply get a pressure drop. Thanks.